Ghost 50 and 94, still got a parts radar contact. I would maintain 1-2000, maintain 2-5-0-0. You are watching a demo of the rotary encoder box. Hello, I hope you're doing well. Stick around if you're interested in how it works. First, pardon the uh, childish construction that you see here. It's my first Adreno project. It meant to be simple. It is a temporary prototyping step. The reason I build this is there are many control knobs used in the fight sim and I'm sure you know how awkward it can be to use a mouse to operate those knobs. Well, let's jump into the hardware first. I use a Adreno Pro Micro mainly because it's very easy to have it acting as a USB joystick controller to the computer and to the games. There are five rotary encoders using up 15 digital inputs of the Pro Micro. Four encoders are for generating and sending button codes. The key point is every time you turn a knob clockwise, counterclockwise, or push its button, it generates a different button code to your game. We'll go back to this later. The fifth encoder is used for selecting various pages. This design allows the same encoder to perform many additional functions. Then we have a 20 by 4 LCD display, so you can tell what the encoders are supposed to do as you jump from page to page. Each encoder can produce a variable number of button codes. A button code is what the computer sees when you press a button on a joystick. That is. It can be configured to have multiple functions. One encoder can have up to four set of clockwise, counterclockwise functions. So at the maximum, one rotary would generate eight different button codes. When an encoder has multiple functions, you use its push button to cycle from one function to the next. But if an encoder is not configured for multi-function, then its push button is available to generate a button code. There is also a long press feature. If you press and hold the push button for more than six tenths of a second, it can send yet a different button code. This clip shows we have the first two encoders each configured as single function knob with both short press and long press functions. Therefore, each encoder will generate four button codes. So let's see how the box interfaces with the game. We'll use FiSim 2020 as the demo. We will look at the typical applications of frequency tuning for the radio. So this is how the binding works. Whole frequency number, counterclockwise, button number 21. Clockwise, button number 22. Switch to second function for fractional number, button number 23 button number 24. Long press, button number 25 for swapping. Let's see if it works.
Let's look at an example of using the rotary encoder box to control the G1000 GPS. All the operations in these corners are covered. One encoder for panning left and right. It is configured to be double function, we'll see later. Another one for range. The bottom two encoders are for the outer and the inner FMS knobs. The bottom tools are being used to select the letters for a waypoint here. A press on this outer one brings up the fight plan page. We are using both the outer and the inner knobs to set the altitude here. A long press to exit cursor mode. A short press to exit the fight plan. Next, we look at the zoom and the unzoom functions by using the range knob. The upper left knob here is working for left and right panning. Then a quick press changes the function into up and down panning. The LCD display is also changed to indicate that. And that's it. It might take some getting used to, but it's still easier to operate than using a mouse. There's a couple more features that I would like to show you. You can organize the collections of encoder pages into profiles. For instance, you can have a set of operations that are applicable to operating an Airbus and group them under an Airbus profile. To create customized functions and profiles, you need to modify an Arduino code yourself. You don't need to write new program, but you do need to know how to edit an include file, following examples to add new definitions, and be able to build and upload the sketch. Lastly, the box has a power down mode. After a few minutes of inactivity, it will turn off its LCD display. You can wake it up with any of the encoders. So that's all. And if you're interested, the documentation and the Arduino files are on GitHub. The links are below. Have fun!